Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal, uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the US markets on Wednesday, 30th of March 2016. Be sure to visit www.tradesignaler.com and uh, download the app on uh, Google Play Store and Apple App Store. Uh, certainly to um, gain access to my latest analysis uh, and trades, etc., via the app, and there will be many much more, uh, obviously. Uh, uh, new developments uh, in store with regards to this app going forward so certainly download and uh, certainly uh, visit and play with the app and uh, see if it helps your trading itself okay now um, with regards to us markets uh, we certainly see, still seem to be on the yellen uh, itis flu uh, or shall we say uh, trying to interpret exactly what yellen um, uh, certainly did to the equity market other than obviously triggering a, a uh, a very very impressive short squeeze so let's try and decipher okay so first of all um, the uh, important aspect of the US markets is number one the Nikkei and uh, number two the USDJPY USDJPY remains weak given the fact that Miss Yellen obviously uh, killed the dollar okay and uh, also the uh, obviously that has helped commodities to a large extent but not significantly given the fact that copper still remains languishing at the lows so I'm not sure how that can be interpreted as being bullish from my perspective but that certainly is a status quo. So equity markets are rallying on the, on the expectation that uh, there'll be no potential rate hikes this year. And uh, certainly she has backed down quite substantially. And she's referring to inflation, etc., which is more of a concern. Well, let's try and decipher. Let's see exactly where this market stands. And let's see where this market is technically uh, speaking. Given the fact that, uh, bear in mind, the uh, Nikkei was down minus 1.3% overnight. And the USD JPY certainly is languishing at the lows. So certainly remains weak. Okay. So let's uh, try and interpret exactly which way this market will go. Now, in terms of uh, economic data this morning, we've had weaker EU data. Um, we've had weaker consumer confidence data out of uh, the Europe, the European session. We've had economic sentiment uh, indicator weaker, industrial confidence weaker. We had Japanese production weaker overnight as well. Oil price has bounced from that thirty-six dollar level, but it's stuck at that thirty-seven point five, thirty-eight dollar level. So um, we shall see. Let's try and decipher this market first of all. As always, let's start with the uh, the Wiltshire 5000. Uh, from my perspective, I think that will be the important index here. Now, the daily chart certainly has uh, we certainly pushed right through the 200 MA, and certainly have propelled higher very impressively. So, uh, we obviously I was expecting this um, contracting wedge type formation to break lower, given the fact that we had a bearish engulfing candle, we had a Doji, we broke below that diagonal trend line. For now, the next resistance level can be seen above. And they are the zones that we'll be looking at now. I was projecting this potential uh, diagonal trend line as well. And that certainly is obviously still holding for now. We shall see whether or not that can sustain itself. Okay, so important, important. Okay, so allow me just to draw this here. So this is the key, your key diagonal trend line. So for now, you are in, a, in no man's land. Okay, given the fact that we have rallied very impressively. If you take the pivot high, take it to the pivot low. Uh, we've obviously taken out the fib 75 percent resistance so the only next step would potentially be the 21400 level and that's whether or not we can reach that that's a different question as well altogether okay whether or not the market can reach that zone or that potential level so we shall have to observe very carefully uh, in terms of the wiltshire 5000 so looking at the 60 minute chart we did end up towards a double top uh, towards the end of the session 10 minute chart as well as you can see quite an impressive thrust higher now let's bring up the uh, the Dow as well. Let's see exactly where the Dow Jones is positioned. Bring up a weekly chart, given the fact that we've seen Im impressive gains, and the Dow is certainly into its diagonal trend line resistance. So it's very hard for us to see any real potential move higher. The daily chart as well, we've certainly pushed higher, and we certainly seem to be languishing at those highs into that resistance. Going to a 60-minute chart, you had double top on the 60 minutes and the 10-minute chart. Now you certainly have resistance up here. So you are looking at resistance for the Dow itself. So whether or not <clears throat> we can sustain a move higher, given the fact that we've had already had quite an impressive move, is yet to be seen. So the Dow certainly is signaling resistance. Now the Dow transportation certainly indicating weakness as well. The daily chart, yes, we did push above that to 200 MA. We certainly seem to have retraced. And now whether or not we can hold that double top. That double top will be the key resistance for the, uh, the Dow transport. So the Dow transport, from my perspective, indicating weakness. And the Dow Jones indicating weakness as well. Now let's bring up the chart of the Russell. Uh, the Russell is an important aspect here. 
There we go. Russell 2000, ETF, IWM. The daily chart of the Russell, certainly impressive. Back into that resistance zone here. Obviously, we had previous support equals resistance as well. If we do break higher, given the fact that we did break out this bullish channel, we were trading sideways, looking to potentially move lower. But for now, we are into gap for resistance. So there is a scope for the the Russell certainly to thrust higher, given the fact that we are now at 2070 on the S&P 500. There is scope for this to thrust higher and then obviously test that 200 MA. So uh, we certainly need to remain open to that possibility as well. Now, if we uh, bring in our diagonal trend line resistance, and that zone at 172 to or say 112 to 114 zone certainly makes sense for now. It'll be interesting to see how the Russell reacts, given the fact that we do have support equals resistance as well. That certainly is another factor to take into account. Okay. The 60 minute chart, the Russell, we certainly did push and made a potential new high. We even took out the gap for resistance as well, which was very impressive. Okay, so certainly needs to be respected. We are now into this potential new gap. There is a gap here and there is another gap above. So again. We shall see whether or not that gap for resistance will hold. If that gap resistance holds, then the S&P 500 certainly will hold as well. We had a double top resistance at 2055. Obviously, we're now at 2070. So let's see where this market is at present. 2070, 2080 is the key zone. So 2080 will be a zone where I'll look, potentially look to show. Obviously, we're out of that uh, diagonal trend line now. And 2080 is a zone that I'll be watching very carefully. 2080 is the key zone, 2078. In terms of gaps, there is a, it just seems to be a gap here on the 60 minute chart. Let me just see if I can zoom out. Yes, there is a gap here. Okay, that obviously that has been taken out now. You do have a potential gap here. That gap is at 2063. We're actually surpassed that now. The next resistance right is at 2081. That certainly makes sense. So 2081 is your next zone on the S&P 500 from a, from a daily chart resistance perspective. Okay. The 10 minute chart will have the uh, unfilled gap below at 2055. That zone will certainly stay. Previous support equals resistance at uh, 2056. So, as you can see, Miss Yellen certainly has propelled this SP higher quite significantly. I mean, it's, um, it's <laughs> we're already in uncharted territory at the moment, or, or going into new territory. We certainly are going into a new phase in this market. So, uh, it's very impressive, very, very impressive. This is where, as a trader, given the fact that you're relying on previous support equals resistance, now even going into Yellen yesterday, I expected this resistance at 2043 to hold, make a lower high, and then obviously go back down, test this zone here at 2021, and potentially break in and fill the gap at 1990. Uh, you had the perfect scenario of a H&S formation here as well. You were just consolidating. You had your left shoulder here. You were you, you put in the head. Uh, you were consolidating for the right shoulder, and what happened? Obviously, we propelled to new highs. So the China concerns from the start of the year, all the concerns basically, have been negated. But technically, we were organised to go lower, and obviously the market has taken uh, a, a different turn. So you have to respect that, and you have to keep trading, uh, keep going. Now I'm currently down minus. Well, last week was two hundred and fifty points. This week I'm down minus ninety nine points. So as you can see, the uh, the results show. That I'm, I'm certainly wrong or I'm incorrectly reading this market at present, given the fact that uh, one day can change the uh, situation very quickly, it change the bias very quickly as well. So you have to be flexible, folks. Okay, so the the S and P 500 2080 will be an important zone, and that will be a zone that I'll be looking to potentially show. Now let's bring up the actual Nasdaq itself. Before I do, I want to bring up the biotechs. The biotechs certainly have held a double bottom and certainly looking to bounce. It wants to be coming to this zone because we have got tired above far 500 on the Nasdaq now. And you are looking at that potential zone as resistance. Now, the daily chart on the biotech still remains weak. OK, uh, we certainly are weak on the biotechs and certainly languishing at the lows as all markets try to move higher. This certainly is is, is lagging the uh, biotech or the semiconductor. Should I say uh, you're back at that double top resistance zone? OK, if we do propel higher or push higher, then you have the next level of resistance is here. Then you have gap fill resistance just here. So we certainly have closed uh, uh, this gap here as well, so very impressively. And you have this resistance zone there where, where we are at, at present. So certainly keep an eye out for that. So any weakness here will be a weakness on the NASDAQ, and that will be an area that I'll be certainly looking to short as well. So certainly indicating to me that the NASDAQ certainly is lingering and certainly remains weak. Now, if I go to the daily chart of the NASDAQ, 
You had Nasdaq at resistance at 4490, so you have gap fill resistance here at 4490. 4500 zone equals previous support equals resistance here. So 4590 to 4500 remains resistance. If you push higher than the 4600 zone, certainly comes to, comes into play, but it's very hard to envisage it uh, obviously reaching that level from my perspective. Okay, folks. So indicating weakness from my perspective, I'm looking at weakness on the Nasdaq at this current juncture. The S&P from 2070 onwards certainly is into resistance, certainly is uh, overbought uh, from my perspective. And uh, again, I'll be targeting the downside. Okay, so I think that's a market wrap. My conclusion is that uh, we are certainly moving lower and uh, this 27 to 2080 zone will indicate resistance for the uh, S&P 500. The Nasdaq already is into resistance at 4490 to 4500. And the Dow is certainly indicating resistance as well. So all bullish news certainly has been priced in. From my perspective, and we are looking to move lower on the back of the Nikkei, down 1.3%. Okay, folks, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs, the specialist spread betting and the free CFD brokerage, and be sure to qualify for that 25% cash bonus offer. Terms and conditions apply. Goodbye now.